everybody. Welcome to the live stream. All right, how is everybody on this fine Thursday? We're back to live streams. And as always, we start a little slow here just so people get the notifications, come join us live. So we'll get into the meat of everything in just a few minutes. Um, so if you're watching the archive, feel free to skip ahead. But uh, how's everybody doing? Are we ready for this live stream today? I'm excited to talk about this. This is a topic that we have not talked about yet on the stream or on my channel really at all. Um, so I'm definitely excited to get into it today. I'm getting myself all set up here. I'm just gonna be talking and monitoring the chat just right here on this one little computer. So it's like just having a little video chat with you all today. So I hope you're all doing fine. I know the world's still crazy. I started doing these weekly live streams when the world was crazy and it's kind of only gotten crazier, but we're still here bringing you classical music and cello stuff whenever you need it. So the show must go on. So feel free to say hi in the chat, make yourself comfortable. I'll definitely be taking plenty of questions on everything that we're gonna be talking about today. I haven't been live streaming as much because I did a bunch, you know, when I first started the weekly live streams back in March. Then they were doing construction on my building, so that was noisy. And honestly, I thought, oh, hey, it sounds like the construction's died down. It's gonna be quiet. And of course, like 15 minutes before I started the stream, like crashing noises began. So there may be some weird background noise. We'll see. I mean, I'm not gonna be playing today, just talking, so it shouldn't be too distracting. Um, hi, Kevin, thanks for being here. Hello, everybody. So today I wanted to talk about in the live stream all about teaching adults. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking about cello, of course, because that's what I teach, but um, really applies for any instrument, particularly classical instruments, since they tend to be, the training is a little more rigorous or the technique is a little bit more difficult. So definitely most of what I'm gonna say is gonna apply more to like learning a classical instrument, but it's true of learning any instrument. Um, and yeah, it's been really interesting for me. I've been teaching for 15 years now and something like that because I started teaching uh, basically when I was in high school mentoring younger students. I got to work at a little string camp that we had in my school district. So I got in the teaching shoes very early. Like I had only been studying cello myself seriously for about a year when I started teaching little kids. Um, but because of that, um, I just feel like I've spent so much time teaching. I've taught so many students, you know, my youngest being like four, uh, going all the way through people in their seventies. So, and every single demographic in between. So I feel very qualified to talk all about teaching different ages and what that's like and how my approach is different. Um, and just kind of share all of that. Hi everybody, just checking in with the chat. Um, hello everybody, thanks for being here. Um, so, oh, and thank you, these are my own photos. Speaking of me in high school, uh, these are photos that I took when I was very into photography in high school, which was one of my big artistic passions. I had quite a few in high school, cello prevailed obviously, but photography was one of my passions also. So these are actually photos that I shot uh, on like an old school manual camera and developed them myself in the dark room at my high school. Uh, but I still have the prints, so I hung them on the wall. Uh, and one of them is a cello, as you can see, it's my modern cello. Let's see, I can use a bow as a pointer. <laughs> I've already gotten distracted on this live stream, but there's my little cello photo. <laughs> All right. So I've got a couple points I'm gonna go through, but like I said, I'll take questions kind of as we go. So. The adults that I've taught, I've taught people my own age, uh, in my 20s, when I was in my 20s, which I'm not anymore, but when I was in my 20s, I taught people in my 20s, also people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. Um, I've taught a lot of people, of course, older than me, you know, when I teach the, the older demographic. So, um, and I've just really gotten a lot of insight from teaching adults. Um, many of them, people think, oh, you must already have a musical background. I would say it's like, there's about three categories for adult students that I've encountered. There is the adult student who used to play cello as a kid or a teen, and of course dropped off at some point, which most people do. So they're returning to the cello, but they're very much like a beginner. They haven't studied music seriously or professionally, but they did play, so there's a little bit of old buried muscle memory, at least some familiarity with the terms and the approach. 
Um, so we get people who have played the cello before, but not for many, many years. Then we have people who have played another instrument, but they've never played the cello. So maybe they played, you know, a wind instrument or they played piano or something, and now they want to learn cello. So the benefit of that student, even though they're a complete beginner to playing the cello or maybe playing a string instrument, they have some usually ability to read music and a certain musical inclination from studying another instrument. So we get that. So the cello part is still beginner from, you know, nothing to something but there's some musical familiarity which can assist. And then the last is someone that has not really studied any music or really played any instruments and is taking up the cello as an adult. And I have had students like that too. And I will say that it is completely possible to learn the cello or another instrument, even if you don't have the background in music or you haven't played instruments before, it's absolutely all possible, um, particularly with the help of a private teacher, of course. So for one, I wanna just address that stigma that you can't play as an adult. You absolutely can. The details of how playing works as an adult are definitely different than learning as a kid, which we're going to talk about. But some people, a lot of people think, oh, I can't, you know, I'm too old and I, I never did music and I'm not good at music or I'm tone deaf and I can't play an instrument. Um, and I just want to say that really is not the case, especially with one-on-one -on -one instruction. Uh, you can really do anything and especially putting in practice and time. So, just know that like if you've always wanted to play the cello and you're just telling yourself that you can't, you can. It will require commitment and patience, which we're going to talk about, but you absolutely can. So that's one thing I wanted to address. And I've seen it with my own eyes with many students that I've taught from playing nothing on cello to becoming actual cellists. Um, now, if your goal is to be professional, that's kind of a different thing, you know, if you're already an adult. I don't think I would exactly recommend that, but I think most people who take up the cello or a new instrument as an adult are looking for like enrichment or, you know, maybe having an activity that uses their brain a little bit or having something that's relaxing because they love the music. Uh, usually the goals are quite different for adults than kids playing an instrument. Um, so just getting into the points of can you learn an instrument like cello as an adult? So we said already the answer is yes, you absolutely can. Um, some important things to know that are different when you learn as an adult than a kid. The biggest one is that you're going to learn a lot slower than a kid. Children, you know, there's of course different ages where it changes, but brain development, your brain is just so much more malleable as a child. So you're just naturally going to absorb more info. You're going to learn things quickly. You're going to bounce back faster, no matter what your intelligence level is just as a kid you are more malleable as an adult your neural pathways are not as open so it does take longer to learn things as an adult um, but that doesn't mean you can't learn them it just means it takes a little bit longer so patience is a really important part of playing learning an instrument as an adult the unfortunate part is that many people choose to play an instrument as an adult because they're so attracted to the instrument they hear recordings and they think it sounds amazing and they want to do that but of course what they're hearing are professionally trained players and it's important to be realistic about how you're going to sound even after many years um, just because you know you're not devoting your life to this from a younger age um, the way professionals have you're not getting a degree in it you know you're just taking lessons so you want to be realistic about uh, just how you're going to sound it doesn't mean you can't learn music and really be able to play but of course you are not going to sound like a professional um, and that's just important to kind of keep in mind. You don't want to be listening to recordings expecting to sound exactly like that. Like those are people who've devoted their entire lives to playing this instrument and you're taking it up as a hobby. So just re remind yourself of that. It doesn't mean you're going to sound awful. Uh, you will in the beginning because everybody does. But um, once you get going, you will sound good. But remember that what a professional sounds like is different than you know, an, an amateur, people don't like the word amateur, but we use it all the time in classical music just to acknowledge someone who is doing this, but they're not seeking it out as their like full line of work or training at the professional level. So I don't mean amateur as a derogatory term at all. You know, we talk about adult amateurs all the time in classical music, and those are just people taking it up as an adult, but nothing wrong with being an amateur. Um, I've actually found that my adult amateur students are some of the most passionate people. They're really into the music, they care about it more, they have a very inquisitive mind about the instrument and about playing. So, um, and they're also some of the biggest supporters 
of professional players in the arts, whether it's going to concerts, back when we had concerts, um, listening to recordings, uh, watching YouTube videos, like usually it's the adult amateurs that are the most supportive of the classical community because they're passionate about it and they're learning it a little bit on their own. So I actually see amateurs and adult learners as a very important part of the classical music climate. And so, especially because I have so much experience teaching them, I just wanted, you know, a whole video devoted to this subset of people. Um, <laughs> you feel slapped in your face? Why do you feel slapped in your face? Um, yeah, I know I have so many adult amateurs that watch my channel and like, I love you guys and like I've taught so many like you and just all the things that I said. So, um, let's see where we were at here. Um, so the importance of patience is really a big one for an adult learner. Just having patience with how long things take, um, especially string instruments. You know, we tell everybody, kids have to learn this too, but the thing about kids is they're just a lot, they're kind of used to having to roll with the punches and having to, if things take a while, they take a while. Like kids don't have, I think, as many expectations of how they expect things to go. They just kind of go into it open-minded and learn as they go. Whereas adults, we tend to have like goals and ideas and these visions and we want it to be this way. So that can set you up for a little bit of disappointment if you're a little over optimistic with how fast you're going to be sounding good or how fast things are going to come to you. Playing string instruments is very difficult. It's not like a piano and I don't mean to get in an argument about which instruments are the hardest, but you can, a toddler can sit down at a piano and press a few keys and it will sound nice. Unfortunately, most people cannot draw a bow on a string instrument and make it sound nice. If they don't know what they're doing, it's gonna sound scratchy and horrible. If they go to put their fingers down, it's gonna be out of tune. So that's just the nature of playing fretless bowed string instruments. They don't immediately sound good. And so that just takes patience. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about, of course, is practice. And practice is required for anybody learning an instrument or learning anything. But I think for adults, it's really important to understand how much practice plays into your development because let's say you're taking private lessons once a week, or if you were even only taking them like every other week or something, that's only, even if it's an hour long lesson, that's one hour of your entire week. And so much of playing an instrument is about muscle memory and repetition. So it really falls on you and your practicing to grow your ability to play the instrument. The teacher will guide you, they will tell you what to do, but it's on your time that you have to do it. And I know for a lot of adult learners, um, it can be hard because there's work schedules, there's other hobbies, sometimes there's kids. Um, so I've seen that when I teach kids, they have a routine usually around doing their homework or, you know, doing what's required of them for their various activities. Whereas adults sometimes are not used to having something like I have to work practice time into my schedule. I already work full time. I already do all this other stuff. I have to take care of my kids, whatever it is. But that practice time is completely essential to getting that muscle memory on your instrument, which is going to make you able to learn new things, harder things, and get to that level that you want to get to, whatever that is. Um, so just knowing that putting in the practice time really, really matters, and that's what's going to get you moving along quicker. Because like I said, the pace for adult students is always slow. Um, unless you just have a strong background in music already and you play a couple instruments, usually those people who've played a couple other instruments before they can pick it up quicker, of course, but still just as an adult, it takes time. So if you want to sh get to shave that time down and learn even quicker, putting in the practice time, you know, whatever that 10,000 hours to mastery thing is like not a joke. The amount of time that you really spend working on playing your instrument will get you there quicker. So just knowing how important that practice time really is. For beginners, which I am talking, you know, a lot about people learning as beginners as adults, um, there is a limit, of course, like especially in the very beginning, you're getting used to the technique, you, your hands will get tired, they'll hurt a little bit, so you don't want to push yourself. Um, but frequency matters. So like if you're even just only practicing 10 minutes, but you're doing it every single day of the week or six days of the week, that's going to make a really huge difference. So carving out that time, you can't really, uh, what's the word, not procrastinate, but you can't like just do all your preparation in a really intense one hour session, especially in the beginning. You want to be putting in a little bit of time each day. So it just becomes more natural. Your body starts to adjust, your muscles learn what they need to do. So 
know that playing an instrument requires not only whatever lessons or learning you're going to do on the instrument, but also making regular time to spend with the instrument so that you actually are progressing and meeting your goals and so on. Um, so practice really does need to be some sort of priority. Again, it doesn't have to be hours and hours. Uh, it can be very short, but the frequency matters. So doing it more often is always what I advocate for. Um, okay, let's check in with the chat. I see a lot of stuff here. Um, Madison says, I started playing cello at 21, and four years later, I'm in book seven. That's awesome. Um, that's really, really great. And um, if you want to share, you know, what it was like for you starting at that age uh, or what your background was, that would be interesting to talk about, too. And, you know, how hard you found it in the beginning. Uh, I would love to just hear about that stuff. Um, Grant says, I bought a cello uh, before confinement in France, went from clarinet to cello, and I'm playing Bach, Sweet, Prelude, and Alamond. That's great. Um, Randy says, he's not convinced that adults learn slower than children. Uh, learning styles change as you grow up. I do think that's, you know, and obviously the individual, every person learns differently too. And I could see how, like, as an individual, you might feel like as you get older, it becomes easier to learn things because you just become more knowledgeable and you understand your brain better, so you're able to assimilate info more easily. I just mean in a strictly psychological development, like I said, neuropathways way. It's just like a known thing that as a child, you're just, you're able to change more things about your brain and what you think and what knowledge you store way more easily. And just as an adult, in the psychological development, the brain becomes a little more rigid. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't mean that you can't learn. I've just seen in my experience, like little things, for example, like how to put the fingers down on the finger tapes. Um, seeing the difference of how long it takes a kid to kind of get that concept versus an adult. Um, those are the kinds of things that I can just see that the adults typically will take a little longer. Um, but in the actual just like learning part, especially like studying a topic or something. I think adults can sometimes be much stronger than kids. But it really, it just depends on the individual more than anything. Um, yeah, uh, kids don't care, they keep playing, and adults are more harsh and judgmental. That's true too. Um, as adults, we have a lot more blocks, and one thing that's sort of a catch-22 is adults tend to have more goals, which is the next thing I was going to talk about. Like, Usually someone is moved to play the cello because they hear some cello piece that they really like and so they have a goal to learn that piece, which is great. That's a great motivator, kind of gets you off in a, you know, going in a direction. But it can be frustrating when you have those specific goals and you're not meeting them. Whereas a lot of times when a kid takes up the cello or an instrument, it's like, oh, this instrument's cool, let's do it. And there's not this idea of like, I want to play the Bach prelude or like, I want to play... Uh, Game of Thrones theme. It's like that those motivations aren't there. Um, so sometimes it can be frustrating. Like the swan is a big one, for example, that people hear the swan and they want to learn the cello. But like the swan's a pretty advanced piece, um, like takes many years of studying the cello before you can really play the swan for the most part. So it can be tricky sometimes because we have those big aspirations for ourselves and we don't realize quite how long it's going to take us or how difficult it's really going to be. Um, so yeah. Um, you do not need to be a lefty to play the cello. Uh, your dominant hands don't matter for playing instruments because you can't play the instrument anyway. So basically neither of your hands are dominant when you don't play an instrument. They are both passively have no clue what they're doing. So it doesn't matter. When you start learning an instrument, you're learning that technique from scratch, regardless of which hand. And both hands are involved in playing the cello. The right hand and the left. It's not like the left hand's doing everything and the right hand's, you know, just off in space. They're, they're both performing tasks and they're both going to feel alien when you start. So your dominant hand really doesn't matter. Um, I know Paul McCartney had the lefty bass. Would love to ask him why he really thought that was necessary because pretty much everybody else plays all you know they don't make a lefty cello they don't reverse the strings like that doesn't exist so we all play the same way and it doesn't matter which your dominant hand is um and then uh shamsa asks what is your warm-up process when you sit down to play um 
scales always. I talk about that, you know, on pretty much all my live streams when I play, but scales forever with my students, always scales. Um, uh, let's see. Robert says, I have a strong music background playing reed instruments. I started learning cello at 56. I'm good at learning the technique, but struggling with producing a more cello-ish tone. Well, tone production is definitely a part of technique. Um, and that would be more right hand technique, you know, bow technique. So, you know, maybe from reed instruments, like you're good with like, you've, you've got the finger pattern thing down. So maybe left hand's a little easier for you. And bowing, of course, is new, but bowing is to read instruments, the breath. So I'm sure as you continue to play and you make more connections to yourself of how you use your breath and how you use your bow, that will probably help your tone. Um, and there's a lot of bow exercises that you can do. Oh, there goes the construction. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of bow exercises you can do to work on that. Tone also comes a bit from left hand with, with vibrato, but I really do think the right hand is kind of in charge of tone. Um, so, uh, where were we on my notes? Cause I got a little off on the questions there. Um, okay. So the next thing that we were talking about, and I kind of divided this up sort of like questions. The first one being, you know, can you learn cello as an adult? Yes, of course. You just want to know that it's going to take a little longer. Um, you want to be patient with yourself and you want to be ready to commit regular time to practicing. Um, then the next was going to be, what if I've never learned music or played an instrument before? So we kind of talked about this already, but like I said, I have had students in that situation and it's absolutely possible. All you have to do is be realistic about the pace. Just understand if you have never played an instrument, that some of this is going to be a little hard in the beginning and it's going to take some time to get used to it all. But it's absolutely possible, especially with a good teacher. A good teacher can teach anyone anything. I really believe that. So you know, you want to make sure that you have someone you trust guiding you that you feel, you know, like you really learn during the lessons and stuff like that. Um, and for a lot of people who play string instruments, reading music doesn't come in right away. I mean, anyone who's familiar with the Suzuki method, Suzuki method has you playing whole pieces on the instrument before you're ever reading off the page. I don't teach my students that way. I do a bit of a hybrid with reading and learning the instrument together. Because a lot of my students who start like young from beginners, they uh, play at school, so they need to be able to read music for orchestra or something like that. And for adults, I just like to get them reading music as soon as possible because I know that the repertoire is such a big part of what they wanna do. So getting sheet music that they can read is gonna be a big part of what they wanna do on the cello. So I, I always involve reading music with technique but a certain amount of technique is just established without reading the music first. So just know that if you're completely new and you've never played anything, you're going to have two things to tackle. Learning to play the cello physically and then learning to read music and then, of course, merging the two together, but they go hand in hand. So just know you've got a little more on your plate, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. Um, okay. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about just how I, as a teacher, approach a kid versus an adult student. Um, and some of these points I've already talked about a little bit already. So adults tend to have more specific goals. Like I said, they wanna play the Swan or the Bach Prelude or something like that. So I do like to base the lessons with those goals in mind because another point of adults playing an instrument is they're not doing it for their college transcript or for to potentially go to music school. They're doing it for like life enrichment. So for me, it's really important to make sure that if they have a goal to play a certain piece or they wanna be able to do something, sometimes it's not certain repertoire, but it's like, I wanna play in a community orchestra or I wanna be able to play duets with my friend who plays violin or just anything like that. I really like to make those an important part of how we structure the lessons or just what our goals are because for adults, like, I don't like to, like, crack the whip with my adult students. I don't really crack the whip with any of my students. I'm, like, kind of a laid-back teacher. Um, I sort of, you know, I always am giving the information, but I don't push on my students because I know that music plays a different role for everybody in their life in terms of priority. So I don't like to, especially if, like, a kid is very involved and, like, 
sports and extracurriculars and he's got to pass all his classes and stuff like that. I don't like to be like guilting that kid about their cello practice when they've got a thousand things on their plate. Like as long as they're having their lessons every week and doing their best, you know, I'm not going to go crazy um, on my students with discipline. That's just the way I am as a teacher. And I don't put any ego stake in my students' successes. So that doesn't make me feel like, oh, I got to pressure this kid to do better because it reflects on me. I don't like to put my ego in the equation at all when teaching. I like to just focus on the individual. What is music doing for them in their life and making sure that that's really what's the focus of the lessons. So for adults, if they have these goals, it's really important that we're doing things that are moving them towards those goals so that they get that satisfaction that they want to get out of playing the cello. And I really do think music for so many people is an escape, it's stress relief, um, it's fun. You know, as professional musicians, we forget this sometimes. Like, we're so devoted to music and we've slaved over music so much that it's it doesn't carry that same lightness and happiness with us sometimes as professionals. So I really try to remind myself, especially when working with adults, but with all my students, how important it is that they're enjoying the process of learning music. So for adults, that means if they have specific goals, I make sure that those are worked in in some way or that we're always keeping them in mind because I want them to feel that satisfaction. And I think feeling the satisfaction and the accomplishment along the way is what keeps us motivated to keep practicing and go to the next level. We all know that learning something new can be very discouraging. And when it's something as hard as playing the cello, like, yeah, it can be discouraging. And, you know, I've seen a lot of, I think adults get a lot more embarrassed than, uh, than kids in lessons if they sound bad, which it's funny because you should never feel bad if you sound bad in a lesson, especially if you're not on a professional track to get a degree or, you know, take an audition. Because as music teachers, we've heard everything. Like we've heard the worst sounds, the most out of tune playing, the most horrible stuff. We've heard it all. So I don't know about, I can't speak for every music teacher, but for me myself, if a student sounds really bad, it doesn't affect me that much. I'm not judging them that they sound bad. I've heard a million cello players sound bad. So, but adults can be, again, so hard on themselves as we were talking about and get really down. And we want to try to avoid that as much as possible because it doesn't motivate, it just discourages. And if we're doing music again as like an enrichment activity, we want to keep it in a positive space. So I always have that attitude. Uh, like the last thing I want to do is discipline an adult student. Like that is not my role in their life. Like my role is to bring them the gift of music. So, um, helping adults get out of their own head and their own criticism and their own ideas of how good they think they should be based on how long, you know, and just saying, forget about all that. Trust me, I'm the teacher and we're just going to work every day to get a little bit better at what we're doing. Um, I think that's a really important approach to have when working with adults. Um, so, and also again, kind of touched on this point, but kids may need to be more competitive on their instrument because whether they play an orchestra and they want to sit in the front of the section so they would have to nail their seating audition or maybe they even want to do extracurricular stuff like in new york it was called nisma but like all state auditions like regional auditions for instrument players and musicians in high school you know maybe they want to do something like that or a seating audition or maybe they even want to uh go to school for music like college there are a lot of things that would make a kid need to be a little bit more competitive and like maybe have the whip cracked a little on them if, the, if music is a priority. But I just don't see that with adults. Um, I don't see it necessary to push like that. So I think it's, it's important to keep that in mind that adults don't need that same kind of pressure that maybe a high school kid who wants to take an all-state audition needs. Um, so, okay, let me check in with the chat here. Because you guys are saying a lot of stuff, which is great. Because this is what I wanted, was to have a nice discussion about this. Um... Oh, okay. So, yeah. And so, people are asking about my teaching, which I'm going to talk a lot about today. That's what the announcement's going to be. Um, so, I will get to that question about my teaching. Um... I've been sitting in a Suzuki cello class with my sons and eventually picked up a full-size cello to learn to play myself. It's been a rewarding activity to enjoy with the kids and playing catch-up. That's great. That's so nice. I know when the kids start little, especially with Suzuki method specifically, they really do want the parents 
on board and kind of learning. But if you can be learning kind of like alongside your kids and doing it with them, that's so great. And then you're going to be such a help for practice sessions and everything like that. So that's kind of like an ideal to learn as an adult, but side by side with your kid, really fun. And then you can really put to the test who learns faster, kids or adults. Um, okay. For adults who are used to being beginners all the time at other things, learning to play an instrument is going to be easier. Absolutely true. And I think that's kind of what I was speaking to is that not many adults are beginners at much of anything. Like many people, by the time they're adults, they've kind of decided what they're committing their life to. They've already established their hobbies. Like there aren't a ton. I would say it's the minority of adults that are seeking out new activities, maybe like new vacation spots, but not necessarily like new activities. So I think that's why, um, and I, you know, I've, I've encountered students and I've taught lessons to students who are so gung-ho they want to learn the cello and then they take like two to three lessons and they realize how difficult it is and how slow the process is and they quit because they're like, oh, I thought this was going to be like easy and cool and I was going to sound like Yo-Yo Ma by like next month and they realize like, oh no, this is actually difficult. Um, so that's kind of why I just like to give all the disclaimers because I've encountered so many people who come in like guns a and all optimistic and then... Like I said, I'm not even a harsh teacher, but just the reality of what it takes to play a string instrument is a little bit of a harsh reality. Um, okay, more questions. Uh, okay, another question about pricing my lessons. So like I said, I'm going to talk about my lessons after I get through these other questions. Um, training my ear to hear the correct pitch is difficult, uh, as well as left hand technique in general, keeping it in shape, vibrato. Do you have any good tips? So vibrato is its own topic. Uh, I'll speak on it briefly, but um, for pitch stuff. So depending what I do with beginners, kid or not, is I evaluate pretty early on how good their ear is to matching pitch. Sometimes people just have a great ear, like they just know what to do. And then sometimes, usually not so much. So I do use finger tapes for beginners when I can. So that's just, you know, putting safe tape on marker spots if you're really struggling you know you'll want to have your teacher do it for you most likely or have you know some good guidance in how to do it making sure your tapes are correct because of course if your tapes are not correct what good are they doing um, but so having finger tapes is a very appropriate crutch to have especially when you're first learning um, you don't want to be reliant on them forever but i don't have anything against using them in the beginning especially depending on the student if they have a particularly hard time with pitch I like to have tapes on the cello to help. And the pitch recognition gets easier with time. So that's why I use the tapes to help make sure you're always in the right spot. And over time, you'll hear what the right spot is. Um, I actually have an adult student who I noticed uses one of those snark tuners. Um, it's a tuner that you can clip onto your instrument. A lot of times people have them on guitars, like they clipped them on the top part of the guitar. Um, but I've had I've seen students use them for cello and it'll just it's a little tuner knob that'll tell you when you're in tune um, And I noticed they actually uses it when he's playing with fingers not just to tune the open strings So that's a really interesting concept that I never really thought about using a tuner for like Your fingered notes. I know wind players sometimes do this like I've seen like in orchestral settings like the oboe player will have a tuner on their stand to like make sure they're in tune all the time so that's actually a really interesting idea that I want to explore more with students is using a tuner clipped to the bridge or somewhere that they can see or even just on their stand if it picks up the cello well um, to help them know when they're a little flat or a little sharp. You Again, all these are just tools. You do not want to become reliant on them, but they can help you sort of get more in focus with your pitch. And then over time, you will not be needing it as much. Um, so... <laughs> a good Quants quote, we'll read this one out loud because I love Quants anyway, and so this is a great quote. No success can be promised to anyone who loves idleness, slothfulness, or other such futile things more than music. Great quote. Um, going from Baroque to modern, is that uh, hard on your ear? It depends. If you have perfect pitch, it's very stressful. I know um, there are people with perfect pitch who had to then play at A415, which is a half step lower, and that was very confusing for their ear. Um, but everything adjusts with time. Like, the only constant is change. So just, like, 
things can be really difficult in the beginning, but if you just commit regular time to it, it gets easier. And that is just a very important thing to know if you're someone who gets discouraged early on is that sometimes it just takes a little more repetition, but you can get it. So um, I think the people who get thrown off ear-wise with switching to Baroque playing, over time, they're able to get over that. Um, okay, so let me get into the teaching specific questions about my own teaching. So of course, with the pandemic, um, I haven't been doing, been going to students' houses anymore, which was a big part of what my local teaching was. I do teach some online lessons. But honestly, in the last few months since I've been doubling down on more YouTube stuff and I've been working on a lot of other projects, I have not been taking on new students. I, a lot of my students are gone now from the pandemic and I have two remaining ones that I teach over Skype that I've had for years that are very committed, that I know that their lessons are really important to them. So I've kept those two students, but I'm not taking any new ones because I am restructuring. Like I said, I have been teaching for 15 years, just like half my life. And I have just been doing a bit too much teaching. I need to take some steps back from it. But what I want to do, because I have so much experience teaching um, and so much experience in just education, I want to be bringing more teaching and more resources to YouTube. I mean, I've always used this channel for that, but that's why I'm doing stuff like this, is I want to keep my teaching around, but not in the same one-on-one -on -one lessons. But so this will get into what I was going to announce today that is just in the works, just getting started but I wanted to talk about it. I am going to be releasing a course on how to play cello as a beginner geared for adults because I think there's nobody that is more qualified than me in terms of teaching adults because I've just done it so many, I mean, I'm sure there's people more qualified, but I just mean I have taught so many adults and I get so many requests all the time for cello lessons from adults specifically, either over Skype or local. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a whole course with separate lessons that is going to be teaching you to play cello from square one. Again, a kid or a teen could use the class, but it's not going to be kid oriented because I think that's what's kind of lacking right now is that all the teaching stuff for beginners is very for kids. And so what I'm going to do in this course is really make it geared towards adults. Um, so it's going to be, I'm still working on all of it. I'm going to be making the, uh, of course, I like don't even remember the, not rubric, not outline syllabus i'm going to be making you know all of the lesson plans for each of the lessons compiling them i'm going to most likely have it so that you can either buy the lessons individually one at a time or for a discounted rate you can buy the whole course and they're going to be pre-recorded videos so you're going to have those videos you're going to be able to pause them watch them back it's not going to be something live that you have to tune into um it's going to be like a pretty much all-inclusive thing that you can just do on your own so i'm really excited about that because as far as I know, something like that does not exist in the market. And I do think, and I've talked about a lot, obviously private lessons, one-on-one -on -one teaching is really, really super important for playing a string instrument, a classical instrument. But you don't have to start that way. Many of the like adult beginners that I've taught, you know, look up some stuff on YouTube and they have to, especially if they're like remote students over Skype, you know, they want to get acquainted with their instrument ahead of time before trying to take a lesson with me. So people are kind of left like searching on YouTube and kind of self teaching and trying to figure it out. So my course is going to sort of take the place of that and give a very thorough, you know, with all my teaching knowledge and stuff from the years of how to really get yourself started on the cello and get you to a place where you can play a basic song, you know, a scale, you can hold the bow, you can do the left hand and you can read some basic notes on the staff. Once you complete the course and you're at that place, you'll be in an amazing position to either go get a private teacher to take your studies further. I'll decide at that point if I want to do a later, you know, a next more advanced class. But right now I'm going to be gearing the course just for beginners because that's what I really see the need for. That's what I get the requests from. So it's going to be a really good substitute for actually taking one-on-one -on -one lessons with me because I just in my own schedule, my life and how it's structured now, I just can't be taking on more students anymore. But I wanted a way that I would be able to still be teaching, still be helping people play the cello. And I think this is the best possible way to do that. So I'm super excited about launching this. My goal is to launch it by the end of the summer. So we're just gonna see how it all comes together. Um, but definitely if you guys have any questions about the course or even any suggestions or things that you would like to see, as I said, it's all still in progress right now. I'm working on it. So I'm super open to hear, you know, things that you guys might find really useful. Uh, 
you know, why, just any, any kind of feedback that you want to send my way as I'm working on it, definitely let me know. Um, let me check in with you guys. Uh, tuners are not a good idea because of different temperaments, but I'm talking about modern cello playing for this, which I guess I never even really specified, but I'm talking just about playing modern instruments, which would mean equal temperament, you know, like for example, if you're learning to play the cello, a modern cello, and you're going to play something with piano accompaniment, that piano is tuned in equal temperament. So if you're not interested in necessarily learning Baroque style playing, and you're just learning from the beginning, I do my best to just teach people equal temperament for a regular modern instrument, because that is what pianos are tuned in. That's what you're going to mostly be tuning to is equal temperament. For Yes, for early music, do not tune to equal temperament, but we're not really talking about Baroque and early for this, just general music making. Um, yes, I use the Clear Tune app for temperaments also. Um, that app needs to be updated though. It's definitely like a little bit like laggy and old, but I do enjoy the app that it has like all the temperaments on it. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, we kind of blasted through all that info. I usually stream for an hour, so um, I'm either going to come up with some other stuff to talk about, or um, you guys are going to throw me some more questions for the next, like, uh, however many minutes we have left, like 15 minutes. So, um, wow, only 17 minutes ago did YouTube email out that I was live. So if you're tuned in late, definitely check out the beginning of the stream once the archive is up. Oh, and I just realized now that I was only, I didn't even see all the messages. So let's just check if I missed anything. I think I got everything. Okay. So some other announcements. So the big how to play cello for adults course that I'm launching is definitely the big announcement. I'm very excited. Um, for anyone who's checked out my audio tutorial, that was my first like teaching thing that you could purchase. Um, it's an audio mixing tutorial using GarageBand, so it's geared for people who want to record themselves but have never done it before and don't know how to make it sound good. Um, and GarageBand is free software on all Apple computers, so that's why I chose it. So um, basically the way that I have my tutorial on my website, eventually I will also have this course um, and all the different lessons within the course. But if you are looking to record yourself, like you're not a beginner, you're looking to play the cello, but you play instruments and you want to learn about recording yourself, definitely check out my GarageBand tutorial. It's at emilyplayscello.com slash tutorials is where you can find it. Um, so your question about video recording and then suggestions on how to improve if it's not live. Yeah, so that may be a possibility. Um, why don't you, now that we are discussing this here live on my YouTube, you can send me a direct email and I'll make sure that I get it and respond. Um, when I get now general lesson inquiries, that's why you may not have heard from me because I've been restructuring and not taking on new students. And I get a lot of lesson inquiries. I get a lot of people asking me for lessons. So it's sometimes hard for me to weed through it all. But just send me an email now that reminds me that we spoke on the live stream, emilyplayscello.com. I mean, emilyplayscello at gmail.com is my direct email. So. You can go ahead and email me there and we can discuss. Um, uh, how long will it take to play a basic tune on cello? It definitely depends how much you practice and how quickly you get the basics. It's different for everybody. Um, but I would say if you're, let's say you were taking weekly lessons or in my course, you're taking, you're doing one of the classes once a week and you're practicing on the days in between. Um, after about a month, so maybe four lessons or so, you should be able to be plucking something simple, like a scale or a simple tune. And then bow usually follows after. Bow is difficult in the beginning for most people. Um, just the way we hold the bow is not normal. It takes a while to get used to that. Um, so if you're practicing and you're doing everything right and you're a fairly quick learner, you can expect to be able to play like a short tune in a month or two. Really just depends on the person, but that would be my, my estimate. Um, 
And then again, when my course comes out, if you just like binge all the videos and you're learning really fast, maybe you'll go even quicker. And that's gonna be the nice thing about this course also is you don't have to wait a whole week or wait for a schedule till it's time to see your teacher again. You can just move on to the next video whenever you feel ready. Um, so that's why I think the course is gonna be a really great option. Um, Um, Randy asks, I have a friend who's a violinist and he says that he has incorporated uh, some of the methods he uses with children to teach adults with better success. Um, oh, hold on. One sec, guys. Okay, I hope that noise was not too disturbing. Um, so it's hard to comment about that um, because I don't know what the methods are. Um, I definitely think that things that you do to teach kids can easily transfer over to adults. It's more that a lot of the stuff for kids is, uh, it's kind of like geared to be like cute and fun and like silly and just like things that engage kids more. Whereas like for an adult, it might not be necessary, but there are definitely certain things that I use regardless of kid or adult, like for the cello strings, I use cats go down alleys, starting from the bottom, C, G, D, A, cats go down alleys. Um, so I will use that with a kid or an adult. Um, so yeah, I don't think adults have to necessarily like, oh, you can't teach them the way you teach kids. It's more just that a lot of the kid stuff is more childlike. And for an adult, you know, I think sometimes it can almost be like demoralizing to have it feel like they're doing baby stuff. So I like to, for adult students, like still really talk on an adult level, talk on an adult level about the music itself. And even if the technique is beginner, that doesn't mean we can't be thinking about and talking about things on a more adult level. Um, do you have any original music or albums released? Yep, so um, I all my music that's tied to Emily Plays Cello is all classical. It's not original music, um, but I do have three albums out. They're all on Spotify if you search for Emily Davidson, um, or you can buy them on Bandcamp if you go to emilyplayscello.bandcamp.com. Um, so I have solo cello albums that are all on my Baroque cello. There's two of those, which are all solo cello music. And then I have a duo album with my violinist friend, um, and we did violin sonatas, but with me playing the accompaniment on cello, and that is also on Baroque instruments. So those three albums are available for purchase or streaming. Um, and then I do write original music, sometimes with cello, sometimes not, under my other project, which is called Wishlist. The list has a Y in it, um, so you can look up Wishlist, but that's like pop, R&B, hip hop, that's like very different than the classical stuff that I do. Um, so if you're looking for just like cello, specific cello-y stuff, um, I would look into searching Emily Davidson on Spotify or going to my band camp for those. Um, so, what else were we saying? Um, anything I missed? No, I think that's all good. Um, yeah, so where were we? I thought I was making another point. Oh, just my announcements. So yeah, so the course I'm really excited about. Again, any feedback, if you're watching this archive later and you want to leave a comment of what you might like to see from the course or anything like that, um, definitely let me know. I, I'm going to be really excited to hear from you guys about that. And other things coming up, I have some collaborations in the works and as always featuring other people on my YouTube channel as well. Um, I do the live streams now. I'll still do a live stream at least once a month. I was doing them weekly. Now they're down to probably just once a month and then videos on the other weeks. So um, I recently did another video with my violinist friend Laura. She and I have did our album together and we play together all the time. So we did a little collab video which was fun. That was pretty recent. And then I, of course, just love to feature other people playing classical and early music. So if you play classical and early music and you want to grow your YouTube channel, your Instagram, whatever you want to kind of get more exposure, um, you can apply on my website to be featured on my channel. I usually post on my Instagram as well, which has even more followers than my YouTube. So it's a great way to kind of get yourself out there if you're trying to put out your own classical music content. And I do limit it to classical music only, classical, Baroque, and so on. Um, and classical and Baroque instruments. So you can apply for that on my website, emilyplayscello.com slash collaborators. 
and I can help you out with the video. I usually help do the audio mixing. So if you want to be featured, definitely check that out. My Patreon is still supporting this YouTube channel. So thank you so much to all my patrons who've been with me forever and the new ones too. Thank you guys so much. If you want to support the channel in a more sort of like ongoing way, definitely check out my Patreon. It's always linked in the description. And um, Patreon is the reason this YouTube channel has flourished and existed. It's been supporting me since 2015, uh, helping me get these videos out every week. So um, I really owe so much to my patrons on Patreon and they are kind of like my VIP exclusive group. So the way Patreon works, if you don't know, is it's recurring donations. Like it's not a one-time thing. You, you give it every time I post a video, which for me is maximum once a week. So maximum for a month. So lots of people pledge a dollar, three dollars, five dollars for each video that I post. And then that'll be four of that for the month usually. So someone who pledges a dollar will give me four dollars for the month and so on. Um, so that's how Patreon has kept me afloat as a freelance musician. I love it. But um, of course, one time donations are super appreciated. I know I tend to get those on the live streams and they're also great, especially if you don't want to commit to the Patreon, you know, just a donation. If you're enjoying the live stream and you found it useful, super appreciated, but of course not required. These are free on YouTube to watch for anybody. Um, so, oh yeah, and you know, we didn't talk much about actually getting a cello, which I know is a big question for a lot of people. Like, where do I get a cello? Which cello is good? How much should I spend? There's this $100 cello on eBay, can I get it? You know, those questions are definitely something that's going to be addressed in the course as well. Um, but uh, I would say for a beginner full-size cello, almost everybody rents when they start out. And there are a lot of now websites, but also local instrument shops that offer rentals because string instruments are just very expensive. A decent, like, student level, not that fancy, just getting by full-size cello is at least like $1,000, and that's not counting the bow. So it's usually ideal to rent. And most places that offer instrument rentals, you know, offer equity and other things so that that money that you're paying in rentals uh, will go towards purchasing an instrument when the time comes, if you're ready for that. And also, usually if you're renting, repairs are included because yes, repairs are a big part of owning a fragile string instrument. So it's nice if you're renting, if your repairs are kind of taken care of, or at least, you know, you have a, they usually for rentals will like replace a broken string for free and stuff like that. Whereas if you buy an instrument, all those expenses are on you. So um, renting is really the best option when you're starting out, especially because you don't know how serious you're going to be. And you, maybe you don't love the cello and you want a different one in six months or a year. So I really encourage people to rent. And I know Shar Music, so that's S-H-A-R music.com and also johnsonstring.com both have online rentals and a lot of different models to choose from. So I tend to direct people to places like that um, rather than like go and people always ask me what brand cello is good. It's like there are brands, but um, it's more about just like finding a trustworthy shop or place that you can get a good rental and you know things are covered. Um, you know, it's like, it's not like guitar where like you need to make sure you have a fender. Like it's, it's not quite like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say about that. If you really wanted to purchase, be prepared to drop like a thousand dollars at least. Um, which most people don't want to do that for a hobby. They're just starting out. So that's why I really do advocate for renting. Um, all right. Okay, guys. So we're about ready to wrap up. So if you have any final questions, throw them in. Definitely be on the lookout for my course. If you're interested in the course, um, I don't have an email list or anything like that. But just be sure that you're following me here on YouTube. And then, of course, on Instagram or Facebook, whichever one is you check more often, but I'm Emily Plays Cello on both of those platforms, either facebook.com slash Emily Plays Cello or Instagram Emily Plays Cello. I will be announcing and talking about this course a lot as I start to roll it out. So if you're following me there, you will definitely know when it becomes available. Um, and in the meantime, I will be bringing you guys my regular content. Like I said, some new collabs coming up, sometimes featuring other people, live streams when I feel so inclined. Um, so, okay, good. Glad you guys enjoyed this. Um, so my dream, pro someone asked my dream project, kind of a lot, big question and not on the teaching topic so much, but um, 
I've had a lot of dream projects that I've achieved. So like one of them was a professional string quartet and I had that in Boston for three years and my quartet emergence quartet. Uh, we did so many amazing things. We got to be on NPR. We were, I was, I got interviewed for the group in Boston globe. We got to, uh, we were based in Boston, but we got to fly out to San Francisco and do a workshop at Stanford, like all free, because we were like the sponsored group. Um, so like my string quartet was definitely a dream project that totally came true. Uh, we got to play at Lincoln Center Library, like we did a lot of cool stuff. And um, my other dream projects were like having solo projects and albums, so I did all of those too. Um, I wanted to play in a professional Baroque orchestra and I got to play with the Handel and Haydn Society back in Boston. That was a dream. Um, yeah, so I've done a lot of my dreams, which is great. Um, having a YouTube channel and a big Instagram. I also, it was a dream to have a very popular Instagram because I got on Instagram when it first came out like eight years ago or whenever that was. And uh, I remember being like, man, I would love to have like a big, huge Instagram account because like, I just love Instagram. I love taking photos. I've always loved social media. And then, you know, years later, my cello Instagram got huge. Just timing and the right stuff at the right time. It's not easy to get followers on Instagram like it was years ago, unfortunately. It's much more difficult now, but at that time I was like there at the right time and got a huge following on my Instagram. So basically most of my dream projects I've done um, which is partially why I have my other non-classical music project now, because I checked so many of the boxes for my classical stuff that I was ready to sort of branch out into different styles and other stuff to just express myself outside of the classical sphere. I'm, of course, always going to be here with the knowledge and the playing of classical music, but, you know, like, my own desires of what I wanted to do next were taking me elsewhere, so that's why I have two different projects now. Um... So, and Emiliano says it would be great to know about the process of creating a course uh, versus one-on-one -on -one teaching. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting thing that I'm going to learn all about once I make this course. Because I did make that uh, audio mixing tutorial, but that was just a one-off tutorial. So making a whole course is definitely going to be a whole new thing for me. Um, but I'm very excited to do it. I think it's going to be a fun project for me, and I think it's going to be something that's going to serve a lot of people because I know so many people want to learn to play the cello, and there's not a lot of great, like, real thorough info out there. So, um, I mean, I'm sure there is good info. I don't want to act like there's nothing out there, and I'm the only one ever doing this, but I think because I've spent so many years teaching and I have a lot of experience that I have some things to share. So I would love to get to make this course for all the people who feel so inclined to learn the cello. All right, guys, so I think we are uh, done for today. Um, but thank you all for tuning in, or if you're watching the archive, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. We have tons of cello and classical music stuff, specifically Baroque music and period instruments is really what the channel is all about. So if you like that, definitely subscribe. If you want to become a supporter, join my Patreon. And... Uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Again, I'll live stream at least once a month. So I will be back and there will be more videos in the meantime. So thank you guys and thanks for all your great questions and for the discussion. And I will see you all next time. Bye.